very often standard wash services aren't accessible to everybody. People who have access issues like disabled people, older people or maybe someone who has a chronic illness might not be able to access a standard wash facility. Um, and that means that we will never reach universal access because people will always be excluded. So at WaterAid we're working with uh, some collaborative partners, WEDEC and um, LCD with funding from SHARE to look at developing an inclusive wash approach and this looks at addressing barriers within society so environmental barriers related to the structure of facilities attitudinal barriers related to stigma and discrimination and institutional barriers related to a lack of information that's accessible a lack of ability of everybody to participate within a project cycle and a lack of policies that meet the needs of everybody within society. So we're working with our partners in Uganda and Zambia to develop this approach. Um, in Uganda we've just visited um, a community in Katakui with our partner the Church of Uganda Tedo and we've just seen a project that's been actually really inspiring. We came and they did the sanitation ladder with the community they showed them photos and, and pictures, drawings, of um, where they want to go. So photos of toilets in an aspirational sense. So the, the community discussed where they are now. It might be that they have a pit or they defecate in the open. And they spoke about where they want to get to by pointing and discussing the, the drawings. It might be a VIP latrine, it might be a pit latrine, um, all different types. And they then spoke about what's stopping them getting to that point and how TEDO can help facilitate that process so that they can achieve uh, safe sanitation and effective sanitation. We were looking at it through the lens of ensuring that everybody can participate. Um, they used photos so that deaf people could um, see, but they also explained it in an audio way to people who couldn't see. Um, they're disabled people who use crutches, so they spoke about different ways of adapting facilities to make sure that, that they could use the toilet. As water aid and the partners uh, such as uh, TEDO that we are working with in this community, I think we've played the role in terms of providing information, information that is needed by the community to be able to support the disabled people the old people, the chronically ill, to get information on how they can best improve the lives of such people in their communities. Um, and, and it was really interesting because the cluster heads um, actually took this information and helped two people in the community to design a toilet for themselves so that they could use it. We saw one man uh, 60, I think he was 68 and he was blind um, and, and they designed an accessible toilet for him which he was really pleased about using before he had to defecate in the open so this is a real life change for him. The second person we spoke to was a disabled girl who um, walks using a stick and um, she had um, a toilet constructed in her compound as well as a, ro a, um, a washing area and um, it, these facilities that are constructed are used as, now as demonstrations to other people in the community to show them what's possible. Now these facilities were quite simple, they had simple adaptations and they didn't seem very expensive. These are local facilities they use local materials that are easily available in their communities. So I'm impressed because rather than people waiting and thinking that a donor has to come from elsewhere to provide these facilities, I think this is the way to go in terms of sustainability. Perhaps the challenge for the future is how to maintain and ensure that such a facility is kept clean. Very often a barrier to mainstreaming and inclusive wash within the sector is Cost. My interaction with the partners this morning upon arrival was that mainstreaming a disability in WASH is a challenge because we don't have specific resources. They say it's too expensive. 
In terms of the hardware costs, we haven't seen that evidence today. We are still monitoring the costs in terms of how much more time it takes to ensure that everybody can participate. So in terms of facilitation and the resources that's related to that. Um, we're also looking at um, various other costs, operation and maintenance, maintenance costs. And we're also looking at the institutional aspects. So we've come to see um, school sanitation today. Um, there is one, there's three pits for girls and one of those, um, sorry, an extra one is accessible. So we've looked at that as well and we're, we're assessing the cost related to making that accessible and how that differs from standard intervention. But um, I've really enjoyed seeing uh, the work today. I find it incredibly inspiring. Um, we're taking small steps, but they, they all add up to very big um, achievements in the long run. And I really think that through this project, through this approach, if we can encourage others to take it up through our influencing work, we really can create some, a sea of change.